computer. Okay. Admit all. Admit all. Okay, so if you're coming in, let me stop sharing. If you're coming, I'm dropping in the the link to the survey in the chat box, and you can see the password in my name. It's spend. Admit all. Admit all. So I'll give about two more minutes to let everyone trickle. We're only at 38 students right now. So we're just dropping in, putting the link to the uh, attendance, and my name says the password, which is spend. Okay. Cool. I'd like to share my screen. Okay. About another minute, we're at 67. Okay. Do I text you or should I just say? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, not text, text so I can see. Uh, if you guys can be on mute, please. Remember if you can be on mute. Mr. For the class, which is humanities? Yes, for humanities, yes. Okay. So let me type in the password. I mean, um, I, I put the link in the chat box, and the password is on my name. Oh, hi, Mr. Hello, hello. So give it one more minute, one more minute before we get, get begin. Once again, if you are just here, um, I am putting in I'm putting the link to the password. I mean, the link to the survey in the chat, and the password is spend. You can see my name. Okay. Oh. Okay. Cool. So I'm gonna put this guy right here. If you guys have any trouble with the okay, you guys don't have to change your the name yourself. Um I changed the the name on my uh, Zoom account to show the password. So you guys just have to worry about the the link I'm putting in the box, the chat box, and the password. Are we taking notes? Yes, yes. So I'll let you know exactly what we're doing. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, Frank. Okay. I have to go. All right. So we're going to begin right now. Okay. Let's put that here. Put that here. So I'll do that one last time for any of the, anyone who's here. So to everyone. Oops. Still got people coming. <laughs> All right. Uh, humanities. We're for humanities. Okay. So here's a link to the attendance, and the password is in my name. It's spend. All right. Let's get started. Okay, to that amount to attendance. So uh, important updates, friends. Remember, first of all, uh, online expectations. Uh, thank you for being here. Attendance is expected just like in person. So you all are here. Uh, you all are expected to be on mute unless you're directed to be off mute or have a question. 
uh, use of chat box when prompted. So remember, you should only be using the chat box if I am prompting you to. So um, shouldn't be any unprofessional uh, use of the chat box. Engagement is expected. Your camera is on. So I know some of you message me that you're um, you have a difficulty. So that's fine. Thank you for messaging me. But your camera should be on. Uh, you must be in proper attire. That's a given. And be cold call ready. Okay. Any uh, questions before we, before we begin? If you can come off mute. Okay. So, thank you. All right. So, some updates, some really important updates before we begin. Oops. Move this guy right here. All right. So, you can all see that. So we finally have our candidates for uh, the November election. We have uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, she was a senator, well, is a senator from California. Uh, Joe Biden, uh, he was a senator from uh, Delaware, also the vice president um, in the administration before our current one with uh, President Obama. Uh, we have Donald Trump, who is a current president, and uh, Mike Pence who is uh, the current vice president, and he was uh, a governor of, the governor of uh, Indiana. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> election is Tuesday, November 3rd, election day, so very important. Uh, the deadline to register to vote is October 19th. Now, you just have to be 18 years, of, 18 years or older on election day, so even if you're, whoa, Demerits. Um. So, uh, even um, even if you're not 18 right now, let's say you're 17, you can still register to vote. You just have to be 18 on election day. So I put the link right here to register to vote. So you still have plenty of time to register, but I would do it ASAP. So if you're saying, "Oh, I'm only 17," that's fine. You just need to um, be 18 on election day in order to vote. Uh, any questions about that so far, friends? Okay. Some of the chat. Okay. So remember, we're keeping the chat box professional. Okay. Admit. Okay. So for that, very important. Uh, also, tonight, uh, we have the Democratic National Convention. It's from today until Thursday. Uh, very important. So the Democratic Party will formally nominate their candidates for the presidency and the vice presidency. So this is where the Democratic Party comes together and says, okay, we formally are going to say Joe Biden is going to be our candidate for the presidency. They formally say uh, Mike Pence, I mean, um, <laughs> Kamala Harris is going to be our candidate for uh, the vice presidency. So they formally nominate. And this is an opportunity to show the American people what the party stands for. So where they stand on different issues with their policies and uh, unite around their shared values. So that's gonna be from uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. each night. So tonight, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and uh, Thursday night. So you might be saying, okay, so how do I, uh, how do I watch that? Well, I uh, put the link for you here as well. So. You just click this link right here, and that'll take you uh, directly to it. So if it's 6 p.m. tonight, you click this, boom, you're there. Um, if after this class you want to register to vote, boom, you're there. So you'll find this on Canvas uh, right here. So it'll be under announcements, under uh, updates. So you click this. And then you click this. That'll take you directly to it. Oh, yeah. Um, any questions about that, friends? If you want to come off mute? OK. See a chat box. Chat box. OK, so I can answer that. Yeah, so um, as long as you meet the qualifications to um, register to vote to uh, your citizen or resident, for example, um, you will be eligible to uh, register. Um, 
and I can look further into that process of uh, how you'll know for sure. Um, I, I haven't registered in a long time, but I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a, ver there's, you know how you order something and there's, oh, congratulations, you are verified. So um, I can definitely look into that. That's a great question though. So they asked, uh, how do you know if, when you applied to uh, register to vote that you got accepted? That's a very good question. I'll look into that more. Uh, but what I'm guessing is, uh, yes, when you register, uh, you fill in your information and uh, you should get confirmation right away, probably an email. But this link right here will uh, take you directly uh, to that. So let's see, so we're out at 205. Okay, perfect. All right, um, any uh, questions before we begin with uh, our notes? So just like uh, we did last time, we will be taking uh, notes on our PowerPoint. We got through about half of it last week, um, but we're gonna finish it today. So uh, just like last week, you should have something to write on, something to write with, and uh, be uh, taking notes as we go along. Are there any questions before we begin with the uh, notes? Okay, great. Are we supposed to write it on paper? Yes, sir. Yes, remember they have to be on paper. I will be collecting them later. I'm not collecting them today or the last time, but I will be collecting them eventually. So like I said before, um, make sure you keep them somewhere safe, somewhere organized. So that way we're gonna say, okay, so I'm gonna be collecting notes uh, next week, you'll you'll know where they are exactly, and uh, I'll tell you how to submit them. That help answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Great, thank you, thank you, thank you. Great question. Yeah, yeah. Ask me all the questions, friend. That's what I'm here for. So, <clears throat> under Canvas, just like where it's always going to be at, uh, you'll find. Uh, quarter one twenty module two bronze PowerPoint. So we'll click here, and like I said last time, your uh, your PowerPoint will always be, always be right here, so you can have your own copy. As we follow along, and uh, we have more time this time, so <laughs> it'll go it'll go more smoothly this time. Okay, so we have. 30, like, we have 25, no, 35 minutes. Cool. Perfect. All right. Let us begin. So uh, this is the heading. Uh, last time was part one, but this is uh, unit one, American government and civic engagement. What is government part two? This will be part two. So if you want to head that, I would head that as, what is government part two? Uh, you can continue on the same page. Just make sure that you, um, you, you clearly mark, last time was part one, this is part two. So you can uh, definitely continue on uh, the same page. Don't want you to like uh, be wasting space. Okay, so what is government part two? Cool. So our objectives, uh, we're gonna explain what government is and what it does. So we went over a little bit of that last time and we're going to identify the type of government in the United States and gonna compare it to other forms of government. So how does the US compare to uh, countries in Europe, countries in Asia, for example? So that's for you. Okay. So here we go. So uh, representative government and capitalism developed together in the United States. So remember last time we were talking about representative government and capitalism? Capitalism was freedom, right? We have In-N-Out, we have McDonald's, we have uh, Taco Bell. People are able to own those um, companies and basically do what they want, right? Like In-N-Out can make their burgers how they want. Taco Bell can make their tacos how they want. Um, Jack in the Box can make burgers how they want, right? Um, representative government, um, that's here in the U.S., and we'll go more into detail, but here, um, uh, the government, uh, whoever's in office, is uh, working for the people, right? So that's what we have, for example, coming up in November, we have an election where we have the opportunity to elect someone who will re represent us in the White House, the presidency, correct? So 
we have those two uh, coming together where um, the people aren't uh, being ruled by an overbearing uh, king, for example, and how that relates to capitalism is in and out is able to do pretty much what it wants and doesn't have an overbearing uh, government telling it what to do. But of course, we'll get into more details. Um, they do have regulations, right? Like if you're working at In-N-Out and you use the restroom, you definitely have to wash your hands after using the restroom, right? <laughs> so uh, there's definitely regulations, but for the most part, In-N-Out's able to do what it, want, what it wants, right? So um, many Americans tend to equate democracy, a political system which people govern themselves with capitalism. Uh, in theory, a democratic government promotes individualism and the freedom to act as one chooses instead of being controlled for good or for bad by the government. Uh, capitalism in turn relies on individualism. So individualism, what's individualism? That's more of uh, less controlled by the government. Uh, people are able to um, go about their lives um, in, a, in, a, in a lawful sense, for example. So there are laws, but um, uh, they're, they're not being uh, taken down by an overbearing government. So people tend to put capitalism and uh, representative government democracy together. So that way um, there's freedom, right? So if you wanted to open up your own hot, hot dog stand today, you could definitely do that. <laughs> um, if you wanted to vote out the president uh, today, well, you can't say, but November you can. So you have that freedom to do so. There's not any, um, like you, you, you will be able to vote. There's no limit for the most part. Okay. Any questions with that, friends? Good, 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 yes. We'll get into that. Yes, 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 Kenny. Good, all right. You'll definitely have a chance to share all this, but I wanna get to the PowerPoint. Um, cool, any questions about this slide? Okay, let me see. Chat. Um, but yes, Kenny, yes, Kenny, um, with the mailbox uh, issue, uh, he's trying to say that uh, uh, vote, vote by mail isn't accurate. However, um, there are uh, situations he's putting the US Postal Service into where he is removing mailboxes and um, even mail processing. And we can go into more detail with that, but um, that, that's a good reason to have that freedom, right, for representative government to uh, vote them out. So if you are able to vote in November, then I would say uh, yes, definitely uh, register to vote and be a part of that change. Cool. Uh, this, this I have a question. Is it possible to vote, but like online? Uh, let me see. Uh, your options are mail-in, so you can't vote online. Yeah, that's not an option. That would be cool, right? Um, but your options are uh, you can drop it off at the post office, or you can drop it off at a specific, um, they have a, like, I, I think, believe at city halls, you can drop it off at city halls. So that's another, we'll get into that. So people are saying, yeah, he's taking away the mailboxes, right? But there are other, other alternatives, like you can also drop it off at like a city hall, for example, or even a courthouse. There's different places, and I'll find that list. So if, if he is like taking away the, those mailboxes, right, um, there are other designated locations where you can drop off your, uh, your ballot. Or you can still vote in person. That's still that's still an option. You can still vote in person. Uh, just gotta be careful because of COVID, right? So um, so those are your three. Yeah. So uh, drop it off in the mail. Um, drop it off at a designated uh, official uh, place, or uh, vote in person. Great question, Vame. Okay. Um, democracy and capitalism do not have to go hand in hand. So. There might be positives with both, but there isn't always. Like you see this shoe, for example, right? Um, you have one shoe that's nice, one shoe that's uh, messed up. So one might argue that a capitalist economic system might be bad for democracy in some respects. So right off the bat, right, um, does everyone have a job? No, right? Does everyone have a good living wage? No, right? Um, does everyone have a stable place to live? No, right? So. Um, Capitalism is good because, you know, you have the opportunity to become rich, the opportunity to, like, you buy a big house, but that doesn't happen for everyone, right? So, um, 
with our government, right? So capitalism is a big part of our government. Um, you do have that chance to advance. However, that's not true for everyone. Um, so one might argue that a capitalist economic system might be bad for democracy in some respects. So remember Adam Smith, the father of economics, he theorized that capitalism will lead to prosperity for all. But this has not necessarily been the case. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a millionaire. Like, I don't have a boat. I don't have a Ferrari. I don't have a, <laughs> I don't have a mansion. Um, but uh, but there's, there are definitely people way worse than me, right, who are worse off, who don't have a home. They don't have, they ask themselves, what am I going to feed my kids for dinner tonight, you know? Um, so that's unfortunate. So with capitalism, you have good side and a bad side. Um, so you see great ga gaps in wealth between the owners of major businesses, industries, and financial institutions, and those who work for others in exchange for wages. Those exist in many capitalist nations. So yeah, you have those um, big like owners of the auto industry, for example. They're making all their money, but they're paying their workers a lower wage. So um, uh, if there's going to be a hit with the economy, you know, those uh, higher uh, people in positions, they're not, they're not too worried about, um, losing that their money. But if you're a lower wage worker, like, yeah, you're like, man, you know, um, what do you mean you're closing my Ford factory? Like, that's where I work. Like, man, I need to definitely, um, worry about where I'm going to work now to feed my family. So, um, that, that, that's a negative. Um, but in turn, great wealth may give a very small minority great influence over the government. Uh, a greater influence than held by the majority of the population. So um, you guys see that, right? You guys see like uh, politicians, for example, like, um, I don't know if you guys noticed, like many of them, they, they've gone to like Harvard, Yale, um, Stanford, right? So you have, usually have politicians who have gone to uh, 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 Ivy, uh, Ivy League schools, higher schools, and, uh, and it, it's, it's pretty uh, common, but, um, we definitely could have more um, more influence from like more regular people, right? Like I'm not a millionaire, but I would love to be in Congress to help make decisions to uh, make this country better. So uh, we can definitely work to uh, take out uh, the people who are usually in those positions as a Senator, for example, in Congress or as a house representative member um, in Congress. So definitely working to uh, shake things up a bit. Um, like we saw with AOC, right, the the House representative member from New York. Um, before she was a representative member, she was a bartender, right? Like, she's not rich. Um, she had a normal job, right? That's one way of shaking things up, you know, um, uh, bringing in other perspectives and um, working harder for the American people and not just um, keeping the usual things going on. All right, any questions about this slide, friends? Doing great. Okay, socialism, socialism. So this is an alternative to capitalism, socialism. Um, in social societies, the means of generating wealth, such as factories, large farms, and banks are owned by the government and not by private individuals. So here, right, we have Taco Bell, we have In-N-Out, we have um, McDonald's, right? But in a socialist country, the government owns all the factors of production. So let's say the government just has one burger place, right? So instead of being in and out McDonald's, Jack in the Box, it's just in and out. There's no, um, there's no private ownership. So you just have the government providing uh, that resource. And we'll talk about how that could be a negative. Um, the government accumulates wealth and then we redistributes it to citizens, primarily in the form of social programs that provide such things as free, or inexpensive healthcare, so free healthcare, um, education, and uh, childcare. In a socialist country, the government also usually owns and controls utilities, such as electricity, transportation systems, airlines and railroads, and telecommunication systems. Um, so in socialist countries, there's no private ownership. So how that works is the government decides, okay, this is how much, uh, well, basically they decide what to produce, how to produce and who to produce for. So the government will be like, okay, so we're gonna make just one burger, one burger um, restaurant. So instead of In-N-Out, McDonald's and Jack in the Box, it's just In-N-Out. But what sucks about that is 
if you go to that in and out in the socialist country and you hate that burger, you're like, oh, this is gross. What the heck? There's no alternative. You're, you're out of luck. You just have that one option. But here in the U.S., with capitalism, if you go to in and out and you eat that burger and you're like, oh, that's gross. I hate this. You have other options. You have McDonald's. You have Jack in the Box. You have Carl's Jr. But in the socialist uh, society, you don't have many options. So you're basically stuck with what the government gives you. Um, and that could also hinder how the government is and how the economy is. For example, um, there won't be any competition. So if the government only has In-N-Out, right? In-N-Out's the only burger place. <laughs> uh, that's the only option. So they know that there won't be any other competition. But because they know there's no competition, there's no incentive to make a good product. Like imagine in a socialist country, only Sprint is the only cell phone service available, right? So you go to Sprint and you buy the new Sprint cell phone, right? But it has the same exact technology as the old one. You're like, what? I thought this was going to be more advanced. I thought it was going to be more high tech. What the heck, right? But it's the same thing. You're out of luck. You can't, you can't, um, you can't get an alternative. But here, you go to Sprint and you buy the iPhone 12 and it has the exact same technology as the iPhone 11. You're going to be like, what the heck? I thought I was going to get a newer product. I paid more. So you have options. You can say, you know what? I'm going to go to T-Mobile. I'm going to go to uh, Verizon. I'm going to go to, uh, what else is out there? Metro. You have options. So in a social society, there's not, there's not a lot of options. So uh, competition is uh, not non-existent. And um, uh, there's, there's not a lot of room for growth with wealth, for example. Um, so with the... A socialist economy and a socialist way of um, life, um, the main goal is to eventually get to communism. So communism, instead of the government uh, providing and controlling all the resources, uh, that power will go to the people. So the people are supposed to be the ones who are in control of all the resources. But what happens with that change, so socialism, if there, there, there has been no uh, country ever that has been truly communist because with communism you have strictly everything is in the hands of the people there's no class systems uh there's no misuse of workers people only take what they need so there's no rich there's no poor people only take what they need so um socialism is socialism and is on the is on the way to that um but in socialism the country or the government is in control of those resources so they decide what to produce how to produce a new to produce for. But the reason why we haven't seen any communist country truly is because those leaders who are in charge of the socialist countries, they don't want to give up that power. In order to turn to communism, you need to turn from the powers in the government's hand to the powers in the people's hand, the people control the resources. And uh, usually there's a lot of corruption and the, the government doesn't want to give that up. So that's a, that, that's a little tangent there. Um, but in many socialist countries, the government is an oligarchy. So only members of a certain political party or ruling elite can participate in government. So only a few people can participate. Uh, for example, in China, the government is run by members of the Chinese Communist Party. Now for this, in our country, right, if you want to be a Democrat, you just register to be a Democrat, right? If you want to be a Republican, you just register to be a Republican. There's no application. Like, if you want to be a Democrat, you're a Democrat. That's it. You're, you're in, right? But uh, in China, for example, you have to apply to be in that Chinese Communist Party. It's an application process and they have to approve you. And they don't, they don't approve everyone. So if you wanna be a part of that Chinese government, they only select a few um, individuals. So uh, that's why it's an oligarchy. Only members of a certain political party or ruling elite can participate in making laws and um, deciding how that government uh, uh, goes about its daily practices. Okay. Any uh, questions? You guys are asking good questions. Okay. Let me shut the chat box. Kenny's asking amazing questions. Okay. Great job, Kenny. Um, yes. Uh, I have a quick question. Yes. So I wanted to ask about socialism. Um, with socialism, 
if that were to be put into practice, wouldn't we lose like our rights as individuals because we're technically just being controlled by the government kind of like, because we don't really have a right to like say like, oh, I want this, I want that. Like each person's different, uh, different opinion instantly becomes useless because it's the government like controlling everything and saying everything. Yeah, there's definitely less freedom. Um, but the reason why socialists don't like capitalism is because with capitalism, they feel like the worker is being abused. Like the worker, um, you know, they, like the bourgeoisie, they're the, they're the top people, right? The owners of the business, but the proletariat, they're the, they're the workers. And the reason they don't like capitalism is because they believe that the workers are being um, abused, like taken advantage of. So with socialism, that'll put, yeah, that'll put the power into the government's hands, but it's in order to make the worker not be exploited and it's in order to make there be no class system. So there's no rich, there's no poor, there's no, um, there's no middle, there's no middle class, you know, um, that's taken out. And eventually with communism, uh, all those resources, all those factors of production are supposed to be put into the people's hands. So they're supposed to be in control eventually. But like I said before, a lot of rule, rulers like Joseph Stalin, right? And in the Soviet Union, like there's a lot of corruption and he wasn't willing to give up that power. So that's why we haven't seen a true country um, turn to communism. And with communism, Kenny, um, yeah, the, the, everything's supposed to be in the people's hands. Like they're, they're able to get what they want, um, but we haven't seen that yet. Mr. That's I, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I just wanna make a quick comment. I read somewhere that like, it says um, socialism has been, um, successful in small countries but typically in bigger countries it has failed mm. like why why would that be the reason yeah so i know in us i think switzerland switzerland um what they do is they mix socialism with capital capitalism so it's not fully just socialism it's capitalism so on um, you know they have they're, even canada canada has free health care right canada has free health care that's been a success but um a downfall is that a downfall with that is you have higher taxes um so the people get taxed more um but with that, you get free health care. Uh, but those uh, countries that we see that have been successful with socialism, they're usually mixed with capitalism, if that helps. Uh, I have another question. Yes, Kenny. So within our government, we have the Democratic and Republican Party, correct? Yes. Do you think it's harmful or dangerous yeah, that our government is uh, split between, like we fighting against each other constantly? Do you think it's like bad to or like damaging to our government for us to have two different parties always clashing against each other? No, I think it's good. So that way, um, you know, if one party is thinking this way and it's not the best way, and another party can bring another perspective into uh do run the country better, I think that's great, you know. I think it's better to always have more than one perspective. And if there's a better way of doing things and that's and that better way will make the country better then I would say yeah definitely more than one but wouldn't it be better to like eliminate the two-party system because most of the time if you're in a party you tend to lean toward a certain ideal and if you were to get rid of it altogether, then like everybody would just have their own ideals to stick with it's not like oh I'm democratic so I have to go with this or I'm republican I have to go with this it's more uh like each person has their own policies and then like just let them stay bro let them talk it's like because you, you get to these, uh, to the, what you call it, the debates, right? And, like, they just keep talking about issues that pertain to their party, not actual problems. Or, like, they say, like, what people want to hear instead of what they're actually going to do because it's aligns with their party. Good, Yeah, good, and it's, yeah. Also, it's uh, also damaging to, like, voters because if you say, like, you're a Republican, people instantly, like, group you together with, like, I don't know, like bad Republicans, like people who are racist and like misogynistic or like basically bad people and they think you're a bad person because you're a Republican when that's just the party you're voting for. Same way with like being a Democrat, like people see that as like the good open-minded side, but a lot of the time there's very like closed-minded people within the Democratic Party. And when we like split the two, it seems very damaging because you're grouping and stereotyping and it's also like if you don't entirely agree with that party, you're just left to agree with the one you like accept the most. It's like you don't have a real choice. Good. Yeah, sure. we'll definitely get into that. Um, so we have representative democracy. We'll get into that. But 
with the, yeah, we elect someone to represent us, right? But there's also the opposite of direct democracy where that was ancient Greece. That was a purest form of democracy where like, Kenny, you would actually go to Washington DC and you would be in the debates. You would talk, you would represent yourself and you would actually have a, a, a one-on-one talk instead of having someone else go for you. Um, I'm going to move along because we're running out of time, but we'll definitely come back to this. So thank you. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Yermi. You guys are amazing. I, I think we could talk about this all day. <laughs> okay. Uh, so but we'll definitely get into direct democracy and representative democracy. So I think that's where we're heading with that. So, okay. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Yermi. Um, so in the United States, the Democratic government worked closely together with this uh, capitalist uh, economic system, right? So we have a connection, right? Um, we have uh, the freedom in the market to provide many goods and services needed by Americans, right? So uh, like I said, like in and out, look, in and out of shoes, dang. I found this picture, I'm like, this is beautiful. <laughs> um, you could buy those shoes, they're not free, but you have the choice to buy them. So the market provides many goods and services needed by Americans here, right? So food, clothing, housing, um, they're provided by private businesses such as in and out right? Um, so these goods and services are known as private goods. So no, this guy's private goods. Um, uh, that could be, hey, that could be a, a burger from McDonald's. That could be a, a Coca-Cola from the Coke company, right? Um, people can purchase what they need in the quantity in which they need it. Um, this is, of course, the ideal. So um, yeah, so in our government, we work closely with uh, capitalism, right? So people like... Right now, if I wanted to open up a, a hot dog stand, like I said, yeah, I could definitely do that. Like the government won't stop me. The government encourages, yeah, be innovative. Uh, if you want to make a time machine, make a time machine. You know, uh, they won't stop me. Uh, they'll actually encourage that. Uh, so we have a lot of freedom here. So in theory, that works, right? Like, oh yeah, people can do whatever they want for the most part. They can open their own businesses. They can make their inventions, whatever. It should work fine, you know? Uh, and we have private goods. People can make those things, sell those things, and it should work out fine, right? Like people make houses, people will buy houses. Uh, people make shoes, people will buy shoes. People make shirts, people will uh, buy uh, shirts. People make hats, people will buy hats. Okay. Let me move on. But in reality, in the United States, those who live in poverty cannot always afford to buy ample food, right? So we all obviously have people who can't afford to buy shoes, can't afford to buy hats, can't afford to buy a home um, to meet their needs. So we see that, um, that downfall, that negative part of capitalism, right, in our government. Um, so they can't afford to buy uh, the food, clothing. They can't afford to buy um, a car, right? Um, so it's difficult to find adequate housing, housing in the most desirable neighborhoods. That's hard, so if you don't make that much, you uh, you want to live in a better neighborhood that's very hard um if you don't make that much it's very hard to uh be in a neighborhood with low crime rates and good schools um and they're usually too expensive for poor or working class um individuals um so if you're in a lower class or you're not making that much money it's harder to be in those uh i would, I would say um safer neighborhoods or those with better schools and we'll get into this more there's definitely a lot to unpack here and uh, we're gonna unpack that on uh, Wednesday uh, with uh, why there's uh, 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 why there's neighborhoods that are are uh, are have a high crime rate. Why there's neighborhoods that don't have a high crime rate. Why there's neighborhoods with good schools. Why there's neighborhoods with bad schools. So definitely unpack that on Wednesday. Okay. Whoops. Any questions so far, friends? Okay, so then we have two more. Yep. Okay. So, um, because you know we have not everything being able to be bought by individuals, right? The government, in turn, will give uh, free services, right? So, with our government, right, the government will step in and be okay. You know, not everyone can afford this. Not everyone can afford that. No, we're not going to charge people for that. We should provide that. So the market cannot provide everything um, in enough quantity or at low enough cost. So in order to meet everyone's needs in the United States, um, the government does provide things such as uh, security and education. So these are public goods, okay? 
So goods or services that are available to all without charge are public goods. So, so these are available to people with no charge, right? So national security, um, Marines, Navy, Air Force, uh, education, we're all here, right? You have free education from kindergarten to 12th grade um, and you're able to uh, get an education. Uh, and it'll be difficult to see how a private business could protect the US from attack. Um, how could it build its own armies and create plans for defense and attack? Who would pay for the men and women who served? Where would the intelligence come from? Uh, due to its ability to tax, draw upon the resources of an entire nation and compel citizen compliance, only the government is capable of protecting the nation. Yeah, so that makes sense, right? Um, the United States, they have their own resources. They're gonna allocate uh, all their metals to uh, their airplanes, right? Okay, we're gonna allocate this material for these airplanes. Uh, we're gonna allocate this material to uh, these weapons. We're gonna allocate um, this material to these helicopters. And that in turn will uh, give you um, security, right? Uh, and that's way better than a private company doing that for you because a private company would probably be overwhelmed. Um, they wouldn't have enough money to protect every single person in the United States. And, and the only uh, real uh, entity that could do that is the government. And um, they do that too with public education, right? The government decides, hey, um, it's a benefit for us. We need people to be educated. We need future doctors. We need future lawyers. We need future teachers. We see that as a priority, so we definitely need to make sure people are educated to make sure that um, we, uh, we have a future, you know? We, we, we have a future uh, government, way of life, economy, all that. So uh, instead of security and education being private, which it could be, right? We see that. Um, it's, it's not private. It's, uh, it's public. Okay. Questions? Chat. Okay, so yeah, we'll get into the yeah, Kenny. Great question, Kenny. Yeah, we'll get into that Wednesday. I promise, Kenny, we will. I have that plan for Wednesday. We're going to talk about this in more deeper sense Wednesday. Okay. So, next one. So, uh, similarly, public schools, right? Like I said, public schools. You guys go to school for free, right? You guys, uh. You guys are able to go from kindergarten to 12th grade. Children of all religions, races, ethnicities, social and academic classes, and levels of academic ability can attend public schools free of charge from kindergarten to the 12th grade. It will be impossible for private schools to provide an education for all of the nation's children, right? Um, you, know, you could go to a private school, but they would charge you, right? But if you go to a public school, they won't charge you. Um, so private schools do provide some education in the U.S., However, they charge tuition, and only those parents who can afford to pay their fees or those children who gain a scholarship can attend those institutions. Yeah, so if, if everything was just private, right, it like, like we, we value the private ownership in our economy. in and outs private. McDonald's is private. Jack in the Box is private. Yeah, but if everything was private, then they would probably charge, and those who couldn't afford that would, would be out of luck, right? So that's why the government provides public education, right, to make sure that um, those who couldn't afford can't can uh, can still get that education. Um, yeah, so some schools charge a very high tuition, the equivalent of tuition at a private college. So if private schools were the only educational institutions, most poor and working class children and many middle class children would be uneducated. So that's why the government steps in and is like, hey, you know, we're not gonna just have private schools available. We're gonna step in and make sure that we have people who are able to be educated in the future. Cool. Okay. Perfect. We have one more slide, then we are done. And then I'll tell you the assignment really quick. Okay. Lower Marion High School. Who can tell me who went to that high school <laughs> in Philadelphia? Okay. Uh, so private schooling is a type of toll good. So we talked about a public good, like a Free, free schooling, free security, um, private goods, right? In and out, right? In and out, in and out selling those shoes. You can get them, but you have to pay for them. You, they're not free. But a toll good, toll goods are available to many people, and many people can make use of them, but only if they can pay the price. So they're a middle ground between public and private goods, right? Um, all parents may send their children to public schools in the United States, 
and they can't choose to send their children to a private school, but the private school will charge them. On the other hand, public schools, which are operated by the government, provide free education so all children can attend school. Therefore, everyone in the nation benefits from the educated voters and workers, like I said, like, yeah, the government's like, okay, we need to provide public schooling because if we don't, um, we're, we're gonna have a mostly uneducated uh, society. So another distinction between public and private goods is that public goods are available to all, typically without additional charge. Yeah, so public goods, like, like a park could be a public good. Um, a freeway is a public good. No one charges you to go on the freeway, right? Um, uh, but a, a private school is an example of a toll good, right? So you could go, you could use it, but um, you'd have to pay for it. You'd have to pay for it. Um, and a private good, like you buy a Coke can, right? That's your Coke can. You bought that Coke can, you're drinking it. It'd probably be gross if you shared that Coke can with someone else, right? So that's yours. <laughs> um, yes. Cool. Um, any questions so far? Okay. So it's 205. Uh, cool. All right. So let me um, show you really quick the assignment. And it's the same exact one from last week. So. Let me show you really quick. Um, I don't want to keep you guys. So let me show you. So you go on Canvas. Same exact thing from last week. You're going to quarter 120 Monday two silver drawings and I'll publish that right now. Booyah. So vocabulary drawings. So you will show an understanding of what is government through four drawings. So using your PowerPoint slides notes from this week, purposely draw images representing four vocabulary terms of your choice. So I put all the vocab terms from the PowerPoint right now, democracy, socialism, oligarchy, private goods, public goods, toll good. So your drawings must clearly represent each term. You can draw on paper or draw using computer just like last time. Make sure you actually draw the images, no online images. Remember, if you're in honors, you must draw six terms, okay? So if you're in honors, you're gonna draw all of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. But if you're, uh, if you're a regular student, you're only doing four, pick four. One, two, three, four. And then you submit that to Canvas by 11.59 tonight. And here's your rubric <clears throat> available for you. Okay, so any questions, friends? No. Okay, so if you have a question, uh, you definitely stay on, but I don't wanna uh, take up any of your time because it is the end of the synchronous time. So if you are good to go, make sure you turn that in by tonight at 11.59 p.m. Remember if you're in honors, you're doing six. Uh, normal, you're doing four. So make sure that uh, you hit those. But if you have any questions, stay on for office hours uh, for the asynchronous time. All right, guys, thank you for today. You guys did a great Bye, day. mister. Thank you. Okay, take care. You too. Thank you, sir. Great job, Kenny. Thank you. If you guys have any questions, I'm here for you. Oh, I have a question. Hi, yes, I am here. Okay, so can I um, email you the um, the vocab words again this time, just in case it doesn't work again? Want to try yeah. to attach yeah. it? I'm so sorry. I told you, you're, you're, <laughs> I got a bunch of emails and your email got lost in uh, translation. So thank you so much for uh, for having that for me. Yes, I will definitely make sure I don't lose it this time. Okay. You're amazing. Thank you. Mr. Sanchez, for the vocab drawings, is it fine if we do it right underneath our notes if we still have space? Um, yeah, just make sure you send me a picture. And uh, yeah, that's, that sounds great. Okay. Sounds like a saving space. 
All right, thank you. Great job, the great question. Mm-hmm.